Welcome guys, let's talk about the Eurosepsis Simonstation. Any patient who is acutely unwell or who is septic can develop multiple signs and symptoms that can suggest you of what is going on. The common signs and symptoms which are suggestive of sepsis are confusion, delirium, lethargy and uh, change in the consciousness. The patient may be unconscious. You need to follow A, B, C, D, E protocol. Start the assessment of the patient by talking to the patient. If the patient is able to talk to you, it means the airway is patent. Make sure that you connect the patient to the monitor and check the oxygen saturation. Start the patient on high flow oxygen if the patient does not have any COPD. If the patient has a COPD, then you need to be careful about that. If the patient is hypoxic, make sure that you think and you verbalize about doing the ABG. Now, after the assessment of airway and after the in intervention, move to B breathing part and uh, check the patient's respiratory rate and do the thorough assessment, including inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. Based on your findings, request a chest x-rays regardless of uh, the underlying diagnosis. It is important that you get the chest x-ray for all the patients who are acutely unwell. The patient may have multiple reasons to be unwell. After you have done the assessment, if you find any crackles, any crepitations, reduced air entry or anything suggestive of infection, make sure that you start the patient on IV antibiotics and you mention about that. At this point, you need to check the patient's respiratory rate and oxygen saturation in combination. Now, after you have completed your assessment of breathing, before you move to circulation, it is important that you talk to the patient again just for the sake of reassessment. This is very important. After you've done the reassessment, move to circulation and start checking the capillary refill time, the pulse of the patient, the blood pressure of the patient and the temperature on the patient. And make sure that you check the ECG, heart rate, pulse rate, blood pressure and temperature on the monitor do not do half assessment and you should not move forward if you do not have all those parameters available essentially if the patient is septic you can expect the patient to have the prolonged capillary refill time tachycardia low blood pressure start the patient on IV fluids and IV antibiotics after putting two white board cannulas take all the blood samples including blood cultures that is very important and after you have done the assessment and the intervention then you are ready to move to D before you move to D make sure that you come back and reassess the patient by talking to the patient if the patient is still conscious and the patient is not deteriorating move to B and do the reassessment of B, then move to D. You can leave the reassessment of C because you just intervened. It will take a little while for the patient to improve. And in D, talk to the patient, check their sensorium, check their consciousness and make sure that the patient is not unconscious or the patient is not responding to pain. If the patient is responding to pain or patient is unconscious, call the ITU. Before you call the ITU, it is important that you rule out any other cause of unconsciousness. That includes hypoglycemia and opioid overdose or any other medical uh, intake like the tranquilizers and stuff. Okay, so as a part of the D, talk to the patient, assess the patient's sensorium based on AVPU scale, check their both pupils and check their glucose, check their drug chart. After you have done that, you have completed your E and C and you are ready to move to E. Before you move to E, go back to A again and reassess the patient. That is again very important. So every single time you have completed your intervention, 
you have completed the assessment of one system and uh, inter intervened and you are ready to move to, to the next step, go back to the previous steps and make sure that the patient is not deteriorating. You guys do not need to look for the catheter just to diagnose the sepsis. Eurosepsis does not mean that it is just a patient who has the catheter only can get the eurosepsis. It can be in the patients and in fact actually uh, the patients, most of the patients who have the eurosepsis do not have the catheter. So you do not need to wait for the catheter and reach to the diagnosis. Make sure that you are able to diagnose sepsis in C. This is where uh, you should uh, make the diagnosis, do the intervention, and continue your uh, assessment of the patient at every single point. When you complete your assessment and you intervene, you are ready to move to the next step, go back to uh, A and do the reassessment. And this is how you should complete. Now, talking about the urosepsis management, uh, you need to start the patient on high flow oxygen. IV fluids, IV antibiotics according to the trust policy. Make sure that you check the patient's allergies. And in terms of the investigation, chest x-ray, ABG, sputum culture if the patient has a cough as well, and blood cultures, urine culture if the patient is able to urinate. In terms of the interventions, you need to start the patient on high flow oxygen, IV fluids, IV antibiotics, and uh, follow just sepsis 6 protocol and do the input and output monitoring. If the patient does not improve, the patient may need inotropic sport. Refer the patient to the ITU, intensive therapy unit, so that the patient can be treated on the ITU and they get all the sport that they need. This is all about the urosepsis. The key point is you do not need to go to E to diagnose urosepsis. Eurosepsis cannot be diagnosed just in a few minutes because you need to make sure and you need to find the source of infection. It is just a simple sepsis scenario regardless wherever the infective source is lying. You should be able to diagnose any sepsis in C by checking the capillary fill time, pulse, blood pressure and the heart rate. Another thing about the ECG, the patients with the urosepsis or the patients who are septic, the ECG may show atrial fibrillation. So do not worry if the patient has high temperature and they have atrial fibrillation. You treat the underlying cause to treat the atrial fibrillation. And uh, this is called the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. This is all about the urosepsis. No, if you practice on your cement scenario, make sure that uh, you follow A, B, C, D, E protocol and follow the sepsis 6 protocol as well. Thank you.